Hi, we're back to present the maintenance section for the Classic Series Single Head Adjustable Pump. Before we get started, there's something that we need to cover, right Karen? That's right, Bill. Before working on a pump, always follow the complete safety and operating instructions in the installation and maintenance manual. And don't forget the required personal protective safety equipment. Use of this safety equipment is mandatory. In addition to the precautions that come with your pump, you must always follow the recommendations of the chemical manufacturer or the material safety data sheet and check local codes for additional guidelines. Preparing the metering pump for service can vary by application, but in general will consist of the following steps. Pump a compatible buffer solution through the pump for several minutes to clean the chemical from the lines. Turn the motor on-off switch to the off position, which is down or to the rear of the pump. Disconnect the suction line from the pump tube suction fitting labeled in in the pump head cover. Before disconnecting the discharge side, bleed off any pressure. Then, disconnect the discharge line from the pump tube discharge fitting, labeled out on the pump head cover. Unplug the power cord. If the power cord plug end has been removed, modified, or the metering pump has been directly wired, do not continue. Consult an electrician to aid in disconnecting the pump from the electrical supply and to properly reconnect the pump's electrical supply. Mount the pump vertically with the pump head in a downward position and never with the pump head pointing up to keep solutions from collecting in the tube housing or seeping into the feed rate control and motor which can seize the moving parts. With a vertical mount, the rain roof slides onto the mounting bracket to help protect the ventilated motor from water intrusion that can cause motor damage. The rain roof is recommended for outdoor environments and installations subject to washdowns. To help prevent chemical from collecting in the tube housing, which can cause the rollers in the roller assembly to seize and damage the tube, and to reduce spillage on the floor, a spill recovery can be set up using a section of the quarter-inch suction discharge tubing inserted into the tube housing cover. The tubing will help drain chemical back to the tank in the event of tube failure. The suction and discharge lines are installed to the pump tube fittings with a compression type seal consisting of the connecting nut and ferrule. The beveled end of the ferrule faces the tube fitting and the suction and discharge line should bottom into the tube fitting. The connecting nut is secured into the fitting finger tight only and not tightened with pliers or wrapped with thread seal tape. Pliers or thread seal tape should not be used because the pump tube fitting is secured to the tube material by an internal seal consisting of a crimped brass collar. And on some of the tubes, the brass collar is under a rubber collar. Using pliers will break the internal seal and cause the tube to leak, and using thread seal tape will interfere with the seat between the connecting nut and ferrule. If using 3 8 inch connections, keep the tube fitting stabilized and attach the female end of the adapter to the tube fitting. Slide the line through the 3 8 inch connecting nut and finger tighten to the male end of the adapter. If a leak occurs, gradually tighten the 3 8 inch connecting nut as required. The suction line should be 3 inches from the bottom of the solution tank to prevent picking up sediment. Sediment pulled through the suction line from the tank bottom can damage the pump tube and cause blockage or restriction in the check valve duckbill. The duckbill is used on applications above 25 PSI. The insoluble sediments can create back pressure that exceeds the pump tube's pressure rating and will damage the tube. Install Stenner's weighted strainer on the end of the suction line and keep the suction line from the nose of the strainer to prevent blockage that could interfere with the pump's priming ability. With both the suction and discharge lines, allow slack so the pump tube fittings can flex to prevent stress on the pump tube and fittings. The slack helps reduce the chance for breaks on the tube fittings causing leaks.